Hi, this is Carol Hornett with a One Take Work Love Play daily video blog. And it's, yeah, it's been a really long time since I've recorded one of these. I just kind of thought, how often could you listen to my ramblings? But I've been pressured more and more to come back to doing these video blog posts. And so today, I'm going to do it to address an HR executive benefits column that went up today that I wrote called, Is Beer in the Workplace an Employee Benefit? From what I understand, it is causing some controversy, which I would like to change into the idea that it's causing discussion, which is exactly what any writer wants to do, is to just cause discussion. Was I writing about advocating beer in the workplace? No, not necessarily. But I was writing about not judging people who choose to offer beer in the workplace. What we find is in the tech industry, people like the company I referenced, the Rubicon Project, but Google and Facebook, LinkedIn, um, any of the tech industry finds that that is something that reflects what happens in their workplace. When you put engineers in a workplace and they work 24-7 at 9 o'clock at night, they eat ramen noodles and evidently, yes, they drink beer. I've been on all of those campuses and I have to tell you, because maybe it's because I was there in the daytime, but I never ever saw anybody drinking beer. I saw a lot of people drinking Red Bull. Um, but I think the point of the column was that the way we develop our benefits and what so many people describe as perks is as a way to describe our culture and the kind of people who work there that would be successful. I worked in the financial services industry. We did not have beer in the workplace, but we did have really pretty good financial benefits, which by the way I notice is changing in that industry because just of the cost. But, but you wouldn't choose to go to work for the Rubicon Project if beer in the workplace made you uncomfortable. If you offer benefits that are different, like beer in the workplace or unlimited paid time off, you are going to really spend time with your corporate counsel, making sure that you're meeting all the employment laws. You're going to have good policies and procedures in place and ways for people to know what the kind of rules are for having a, an interesting benefit um, that attracts you there. But in, in no other time than now can I think of how important it is to have something, a benefit that is something that reflects who your company is. And I turned a company into a person. It, it's, it's the characteristics of what you want people to think about when they think about coming to work for your company. So is beer in the workplace a good idea? Depends on your company. As my friend and mentor Ron Kessler says about ROI, you know, ROI, he says, is extraordinarily local, and I think benefits like beer in the workplace and unlimited PTO is extraordinarily local. But I say kudos to employers who have taken the step to identify who they are and reflect the kind of people that they want to work there so that they can be the most successful that they can be. And the bottom line, I think, particularly with these more avant-garde benefits, is that these employers are reflecting trust in their employees and when trust is at an all-time low there's no better time to do that and one final thought today the Harvard Business Review tweeted an article about happiness in the workplace and how to make yourself happier there and their one single point was to start working outside of work on finding another job and another passion and if that's the, what the Harvard Business Review is recommending for finding happiness maybe they need to have beer in the workplace this is Carol Harnett with another one take work, love, play, daily video blog saying that I hope you've enjoyed some tremendous love today, that you will enjoy some great work, and that you don't forget to play. Thanks.